Who is the worst attention whore you've come across? My grandma has to make everything about her. Literally everything. No matter the person or situation. And if the convo switches to where it's not about her. She gets visibly annoyed and you can see the gears turning in her head as she tries to figure out how to get the conversation back onto her. She constantly retells stories she is already told 1000 times back from when she was younger if she can't think of anything recent. If I have to ever again hear about how she was prom queen back in 1951. Or valedictorian of her 10 person 8th grade class. Or how whenever she goes anywhere. Everyone just loves her, she literally says and you know. They just love me all the time. I'm gonna lose it. A lady that I work with is the biggest one upper I have ever met. In April I had major surgery to remove half of my digestive system and was given a lot of attention from our concerned co-workers. She was not happy because she wasn't the center of attention anymore. Well. She found out she needed to have a DNC, outpatient procedure to cauterize her uterus and you're awake for the whole thing. She came into work she decided to milk it for all she could. And when she came into work the next day she was distraught over the fact no one came to check up on her the night before and wouldn't talk about anything but her recovery. By the end of the week she was telling people she was recovering from cancer surgery. In fact she still complains that she is recovering from it and this happened back in April. She also told me, unsolicited of course, that the reason she didn't come see me while I was in the hospital was because her mom had died in a hospital 13 years ago and she is still grieving and going to a hospital would make her grieving process start all over again. I actually feel bad for her. Girl in college would constantly try to get attention oh my boyfriend dumped me. My new guy beats me. I'm gay. I'm not gay. I own a signed Kurt Cobain bass guitar but by far the worst one I was raped and the guy got sent to prison gave people a paper cut out of a pay case but it looked odd. So I tracked it down using the google and found she had altered it and it was some other girl. We all cut ties with her after that. F king psycho. My fiance has been my best friend since we were kids. Once. In high school. He was dating a girl who decided that after scaring the shti out of him by trying to cuff him to the bed against his will. She was going to threaten to kill herself if he dumped her. About 10 years later I ran into her at a party. She was there with her husband and infant son, not the kind of party you take a baby to. But okay. She proceeded to tell me how they never technically broke up since. Being 15 years old. His answer to if you dump me I'll kill myself was to just stop talking to her. And because of that. They were technically still together and she was cheating on him with her husband. Making her son a bastard. She was 100% serious. And she also told me to tell him she wanted an apology. This was in front of a lot of very stunned people. This girl in 8th grade claimed she was depressed and suicidal she was popular so everyone believed her and felt bad for her. She got all kinds of attention for it. There was this kid in the same grade who was actually depressed and he tried hanging himself on a doorknob in the back of our class when no one was looking one day and in an odd way he became popular after because of it. She decided to do the same one day in class except no one noticed her doing it until she was passed out and had to go to the emergency room. My high school ex posted a picture of a knife to his wrist on Twitter after I broke up with him for cheating on me and being pathological liar. He told everyone to message me and to talk to him, I cut off all contact, or he was going to kill himself. I hate that I was young and dumb. So it worked and we ended up back together. I once had a guy do that but we'd been on like 3 dates. Called the cops on his pathetic ass. He got all upset with me because his parents got angry with him lol. But I totally understand the young and dumb part. Especially if you once cared about this dude and you don't want to see him in pain. There was this British TV show about bad moms and one of them made her daughter dress way older than she looked. Daughter wanted to wear a t-shirt and jeans to go out to eat. Mom made her wear tights. Mini skirt. Boots. Tight tee. Sleeveless overcoat. And a boatload of jewelry. Kid basically looked like she was in a Disney show, and would make her daughter randomly sing and do her cheer routine in public because you never know who's watching. People get discovered on the streets every day. Double quote. 
My mom did this and it f kept me up so bad. I wasn't allowed to pick out clothes until I was 14. She decided on my outfits and hair. I get it. She wanted me to look nice. But treating me like a doll wasn't the answer. I know it sounds dumb and weak. But it left trauma. If I didn't sit perfectly still for 1-4 hours while she did my hair. I got screamed at. My hair yanked on. And denied food. There was a girl in my college that constantly would say shit. During orientation she told people she was recovering from brain cancer, didn't happen, and was partially deaf. She wasn't. She then found out my friend had epilepsy so she started doing these exaggerated tremors. She then would fake seizures all the time for all the years she was there. Which was a pain the butt because I would have to treat them like real ones. She did it once during a power outage for the most attention possible. She did it so often that once 911 hung up on someone calling it in because they knew it was her. Edit. Since I keep getting comments about 911 hanging up. I feel like I should mention that the person who called was also a dispatcher. There's a girl in my college classes who claims her dad owns a huge soccer team but doesn't know the name. She's dating one of the LA Lakers but can't give his name out. But she is also talking to someone who's in the NFL to keep her options open. She says her dad works at a local steel factory and has no idea where his extra money comes from because he gives her hush money then called another girl out in class for lying to fit in. There was a girl who used to be part of this group of friends that I saw on the odd occasion when I was a teen. I only met her twice. But on both occasions she started to full on sing super loud whenever everybody else was talking and she was not involved in the conversation. I kind of have a friend who randomly bursts into song in public. People in her life encouraged it for years and she just won't fking stop. She's terrible. She's also a total weeb and sings mostly anime intros. Pronouncing every word wrong. Got two gems. 1. A high school friend. When his girlfriend talked about ending the relationship he sent her a picture of him pointing his dad's gun to his head saying the typical if you leave I'll kill myself. And he always pulled that sort of drama antics. 2. High school graduation party at hotel. They gave out sparkling wine without alcohol. I saw peeps chugging down glasses and then acting like they were really drunk. There was no bar or alcohol included in the party. In hindsight. They were cringy as fuck. Knew a girl in high school that claimed to have did. So you never knew who you were talking to. It was literally a that wasn't me. That was Patricia situation. We all knew she was faking because there was always holes in her stories. Mixing up details with the different personalities on top of a new character every week to blame her actions on. We just gave her the benefit of the doubt. 10 years later she never mentions any of them again. Oh yeah and she told me she as a 10th grader got paid to train horses to do tricks for like circus shit. Then forgot about it the next day I brought it up. As an cringy ex-horse girl this one was the worst lie of all. So far. The worst attention WH Ray I've encountered is a girl in my class. She goes out of her way to cause drama with both students and teachers. Purely for her own entertainment. It's so ridiculous and gets really over the top most of the time. The most memorable drama she's caused in my eyes is with a substitute teacher in Italian. She rarely pays attention and lote and often ignores instructions from my normal teacher. So this is pretty predictable. She had her phone out and of course. That day we had probably one of the most grumpy and strict teachers I've ever met. She refused to hand over her phone and did some extreme talking back. The teacher got so mad that she threatened a detention and a plethora of other punishments. But even when she was sent to Ray Think, the title is self-explanatory, she refused. She left the class and came back repeatedly. It was one of the most frustrating things I've ever witnessed. Quite surprisingly, she got away with a lunch detention. Even after talking back. Refusing to leave. Arguing to a teacher and causing drama. The worst. And the best. We were young kids together in London. Back in the day. George O'Dowd Aka Boy George. Hey. I was an attention WH Ray too. The best thing about him was early on he became a pop star. And stayed being one. There was no other possible world for him to thrive in. 
Proud of him. This girl I know would trip and would make a big scene about it she would even overdo tripping and then she says wow no one saw that. Then she talks about how no one in our town likes her and that the only time people talk to her is when they need her help. Well she is extremely obnoxious. Like if someone laughs at her jokes she would like say it over and over again. It is hikey annoying. A friend joined me and two others in the Philippines for a couple weeks despite her never having traveled before and despite her having 12,000 words to write while for uni we're there. About 5 days and she goes storming off in El Nido in the pouring rain in the dark and claims she's tired. We tell her not to go but by this point she's been crying and complaining about the trip all week. She's staying in a different room so we didn't hear from her until the next day because reception told us she had checked out but left her watch behind. She wrote on Facebook we had been leaving her out, not true, and not being considerate towards her injury, a small graze on her leg, and we weren't being supportive with her uni work, Aka not doing it for her. Oh and by the way we're all around 26. My two ex-friends. They dated in high school. Were forced to split because she was legal age, 19, and he was 15. Got back together and just made a bunch of bad choices together, engaged after a month, and just constantly crying for attention. Everything he cooks, microwaves, goes onto Facebook and Snapchat with annoying voiceovers of her going oh 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 saru good. Constant posts of oh my god I love my baby so much with lovey dovey photos of them. But they fight and break up more than anyone I have ever known. If he pissed her off she text me a picture of her engagement ring being taken off. They thought a friend snapchatting a picture outside of their house and not going to see them meant he had to be planning on killing himself. Proceeded to spam all their mutuals with panicked messages until they found out it was basically just a hey look I was in your town pic. Not only are they attention whores but just a total hot mess altogether. A girl I know is always sick with something or other. She is also always whinging about how the surgeons tell her she doesn't need operations. She persists though until she gets them. It's not a pain pill thing. Purely attention. All she talks about is how terrible hers is is and she can't work because of it. Then a month later we never hear about the first problem again and she now has ABC. She's managed to get two shoulder operations. A knee reco and an endo op. Surprise surprise the surgeon said she looked fine when they opened her up and she's never complained about those things ever again and now has other things to wrong which conveniently only affect her when she wants something. College and HS. Lots of them. Girls and guys that would act drunker than they were at parties or bars to get more attention and get away with doing shti then falling back on the I drank too much excuse. High school it was more obnoxious and obvious. Just more prevalent in college. They had worked out the kinks by then so it was harder to tell if they were faking it or actually just hammered. I have used the excuse myself. Amazing how people actually buy that when you are young. And X200B. They were more along the lines of attention sluts. No one was paying them. When I was in middle school. These two guys I knew stabled horses at the barn I did. Well one night we were having a small cookout and they started acting drunker than hell. Saying that they drank too much beer. When I was sent to their father's truck to get hot dogs I saw a half empty case of root beer in glass bottles. I grabbed one and showed it to them. I called them out on their bullshit and they immediately sobered up. These were the same kids that tried to show off to me and a friend by identifying edible plants. They ate a bunch of poison ivy. My friend and I tried to stop them. But they didn't think girls could know what plants to eat. This kid who's chilled out by now and I'm good friends with once was a huge attention whore. One day he walked up to our table while we were peacefully playing smash and pulled out one of those rolls of minty tape, that's what I call them, meant to make your breath minty and says. I'm eating this whole roll and none of you are ever gonna stop me god damn it and so we didn't. A little touchy but here goes nothing. My brother was in a toxic relationship. He was physically and mentally being abused, not sexually. He did manage to get his abusive girlfriend pregnant. It got to a point where he was actually crying because he just needed to come home with me to our mom. That was the last straw for me so I said fck it. Come with me. So he grabbed his stuff. And we literally ran from her. She was throwing his stuff out the door and screaming. 
We kept running. But. Then she yelled. If you don't come back right now. I'm going to stick a knife in my pregnant belly. I wish I was making this up. We of course ran back to prevent this. So yeah. That. Did they stay together? They did. My nephew just turned 6 and he is the sweetest little kid I know. Unfortunately my brother and his girlfriend are both incredibly mentally unstable and we as a family have tried everything to help him but most importantly their kids. Nothing really worked. The kids are loved by the both of them. And in no way being abused but their home environment is just terribly unstable. Sister-in-law. At our wedding she did everything she could to steal attention away from her sister, my wife. She wore a dress that Shed had altered to be both low cut and short skirted. Then when no one was paying her attention kept accidentally dropping things so Shed would bend over to pick them up. When her dad Ray married she was telling people at the ceremony that she had cancer. But had come to terms with it, she didn't have cancer. I went to a costume wedding once. One woman, not the bride wore her own wedding dress and claimed she was the bride of Chucky. A costume wedding? That sounds cool as hell. What did the couple go dressed as? Best costume there? This sounds really neat. My roommate's cat died last week. When she told her co-workers. One lady proceeded to start telling a story about a cat she kinda owned that never even lived with her that died 5 plus years ago. She got so worked up that she started crying and the entire office started consoling the co-worker instead of my roommate whose cat had died the day before. Unbelievable. There was a girl in my sorority who was apparently allergic to water. Even though she was in swimming class with another one of my sisters. But that doesn't top the girl that apparently had brain cancer and would take any given moments to talk about how she'd been repeatedly sexually assaulted. And look. I'm a victim of childhood sexual abuse and a survivor of rape. In my experience. Survivors don't just wave it around like a flag to get out of stuff. She definitely used it that way. There was also a girl in my sorority who claimed to have a phobia of the color yellow. Just stay away from local sorority girls. National sorority girls are probably fine. I worked in a remote restaurant somewhere in England. Unfortunately. I had to live in a confined area with 8 other people. One of them. The bastard in question. Would constantly walk into people's rooms without knocking. Would routinely walk up and yell in people's faces as a joke in polish. Constantly made sexually explicit jokes to the waitresses and always had to be the center of attention. And X200B. I do not miss that man. Every other week this girl, 22 years old would say that social media is depressing and she would delete her account. She would be off of social media for a maximum of two days. She would delete her account and made another one at least three times a month and friend request everybody again. After the fifth or sixth time she added me. I stopped accepting her friend request because I was sick of her weekly meltdowns. She also was either asexual, bisexual, lesbian, or 100% straight depending on her mood. I know a girl who tripped and started crying and screaming that someone pushed her when she was walking behind everyone. Played guys hard as well. I did us took a 20 minute nap after she broke up with a guy because I didn't like him and she had a new boyfriend. Can't make it up. There was another girl too who tried to act cutesy and call A and would literally prance around as if her sneakers had trampolines in them. If you didn't look at her she would pout and talk in this annoying baby voice where she tried to sound half her age while making gestures that 5 year olds do when they pout and throw fits and talked about being a witch who makes love potions. My ex-girlfriend. She lied about having a kidney transplant. Her excuse for not having scars were that she had dissolvable sticks. She pretended her kidneys were failing again during our relationship and pretended to be on kidney dialysis. She had me worried constantly because I genuinely thought she was dying. She also lied about having cancer when she was younger. Being deaf and having hearing aids implanted in her head that there were no visible signs of. She also posts her TikToks on her Instagram page. If that doesn't scream attention WH Ray I don't know what does. A girl at my high school passed away in a snowboarding accident and the whole school got together and made t-shirts. Buttons etc. 
in her memory to raise money for her funeral costs. Coincidentally, another girl had a skiing accident the next weekend which resulted in a concussion that left her unable to write, walk straight, or put together complete sentences. She made sure that people noticed her stumbling, stuttering and poor motor skills. Oddly enough the accident occurred on a day she was spotted with family in town. A good hour and a half away from where the incident took place at the moment she said she was skiing. After a week of nobody caring her motor skills improved to how she was before the accident. Funny coincidence that is. I didn't even realize this but after scrolling through these posts. I have a friend who gets really mad if someone ignores her on a group chat. Comma and she'll then keep reposting the message she sent over and over until someone replies. Also when that inevitably annoys people she then pulls the all you all hate me I don't know what I did I get it. Should probably clarify. We do not ignore her on purpose. It happens if we miss one message in a thousand. My little sister. She cannot be in a room if everything isn't about her. She always talks about herself and struggles to pay attention to others unless what they say is about her. She's easily agitated and thinks highly of herself while everybody else is below her in maturity and intelligence. When she started losing attention in the family she popped out her baby and now she's back in the spotlight full time. She's gotten a bit better recently but I prefer to not be around her too much because she drives me nuts. My stepdad is pretty crazy. He likes being the center of attention and right about everything. He lies all the time and constantly insults people he doesn't agree with. He told me I would be nothing in life when I was 13. He outed his daughter to her religious mother to brag that she loved him more. After that she stopped talking to him. He told his daughter she was the reason I was depressed and that she tore the family apart. He told her to kill herself. He even lied to her and said he was going to die soon in order to get her to contact him. He's done plenty of other things but that puts him in the loco bin for me. My old boss always was an attention whore. One time he burned his foot on a George Foreman grill and got mad after no one paid attention. When he told us not to pay him any mind. He also one time was pretending to commit suicide so some of the workers would take him seriously. One of the worst events was that he got really mad at a Christmas party of ours and dressed up like Jesus because he was mad about not being the center of attention. It was ridiculous. Freshman year. Me and an entire building are moving all of our stuff into our dorm rooms. We all had freshman orientation the next afternoon. After a day of moving boxed and bedroom stuff up hills and stairs everyone was exhausted. We all just wanted to go to bed and sleep in the next day. Since our orientation began the next afternoon. So the next morning. At like 6. 30. We all wake up to this one doucher bag playing the violin in the stairwell of the building. Woke everyone up. And we all went to go see what was going on. He just wanted everyone to see he could play violin. We all groaned and rolled our eyes and went back to bed. This dude kept playing the same scale for like another hour just wanting and waiting for more people to come and give him attention. Later we found out he didn't really know how to play. But just knew that one scale and played it over and over again. There was a kid at my school. People liked him but knew he told a few porkies from time to time. He told us all that his granddad had recently died from cancer. Obviously a sad situation we all sympathized with him. A few weeks later he comes off his mope bangs his head goes hospital with a concussion. Whilst in bed he's talking about his granddad and saying like where is he and stuff. We find out his granddad was fine. One of my mates whose dad did actually pass from cancer was furious with him. Why would you like about something like that? Some people man. One of my high school friends used to lie all the time. No matter how much you called her out on it. Or how much proof you had she'd just ignore you. Then when she thought you'd forgotten about it she'd worn her way back into being friends with you. It was an endless cycle. Literally could not shake her. I had been around her since we were kids. She lived up the street from me. I knew when she would lie. She'd say things like she had a brother. She was adopted. Etc. None of that was true. The worst time was when we were juniors she ended up getting pregnant. I knew as much dishonesty she had. She wouldn't lie about having an actual baby. 
she told me and another friend. And the next day she said she'd told her parents, as I had suggested, and told me they were being supportive of her. After that day nothing was said about it. I didn't ask because it really wasn't my business and I thought if she wanted to talk about it she would bring it up. Fast forward about 7 to 8 months. She's obviously pregnant. She denies it when asked. Saying she's just gained weight. Her parents make her take a home test, she didn't tell them. Not surprised, and it came back negative. I wouldn't be surprised if she had just ran the test underwater. She could have avoided all the drama by being honest from the beginning. I don't speak to her anymore. Our boss was throwing a Tupperware party at her house, kill me now. And those who were invited had to keep it on the DL since not everybody was. A few of us were talking about it in the break room when a woman who we knew was not invited walked in. As soon as she realized what we had been talking about she immediately doubled over and clutched her stomach. Crying I'm in so much pain. And faked a stomach ache. I thought it was interesting that this woman was totally fine throughout the day but was in so much pain whenever the party she wasn't invited to was mentioned. Giving her an excuse not to go. But making sure all eyes were on her. Maybe this is why she wasn't invited. I once knew a woman who would come to our dorm room, all male dorm. All women friends. She would bring brownies and cookies that she just baked. Then she would insist that we all try one. Including the women. After everyone had had one. She would refuse to try one and say she can't because she's trying to lose weight but she can never seem to go down a bra size. All the men liked her. All the women hated her. Had this classmate who was an absolute diva. He would sashay into class and act like he was the boss. Dictate who sat where. And just aggressively hit on the popular guys in class. He was our teacher's nephew and thought that entitled him to authority in the classroom. He was well behaved around parents and teachers but to a lot of us he was an all around headache. I was enemy number one just cause I was well liked, belly. I mean I had my annoying moments as well, and I could sing a couple notes higher than he could. He made it his mission to see me die socially. If I got good grades. He accuses me of cheating. If I had a little extra money for recess. He'd buy a whole bunch of snacks just so I couldn't actually get anything. All the while he flaunted how rich he was. How smart he was. How he didn't stink like I did. Funny how one bad day with diarrhea can just stick with you all your primary school life. I snapped when he told the class that he had seen me snogging my younger sister. Calling me a sick pervert. How that is probably how my family is. How dare we call ourselves Christians. He stopped when his desk missed him by inches and hit the blackboard instead. But that is a story for those who might be interested. Someone I used to be friends with his sister died in the Manchester bombings. And there was this one girl we all went to school with that made it all about her. She made out like it was her sister that died. Constantly posting things on Facebook and generally making it all about herself. And she wasn't even close friends with her she knew her through others and met her like. Once. And at the funeral she decided to tell everyone about the guy whose sister died that she sent nudes to her and loads of other inappropriate things that you shouldn't talk about with others never mind at a funeral. She just begs attention constantly. I've never known anyone like her.